Talab, que és el que estàvem fent. Moltes gràcies per haver arribat fins aquí després d'haver estat tots aquests dies, aquests tres dies en el Congrés. Estem realment contentes de com ha anat i de l'impacte que hem aconseguit. I sense més, farem una presentació conjunta. Sara Medi Jones, ella és membre de l'IPB i també, diguem-ne, que treballa en el C&D, el Campaign for Nuclear Desarmament, i farem una presentació conjunta i, diguem-ne, que comença Sara. Gràcies. Bona tarda, hola. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this final plenary session of what has been a fantastic weekend, all of us being together as the International Peace Bureau, the International Peace Movement. As Jordi said, uh, I'm Sarah Medi jones I'm the Campaigns Director for C&D, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament in the UK. And I have just come from a workshop on digital campaigning, but I must say it's also good to be here in person, connecting with each other, and I think the future is a true hybrid and mixing of all of that. So we will start with our final speakers in our final plenary. We are going to go first to representatives of the IPB Youth Network. Um, so when I attended the IPB Youth Conference in Berlin two years ago, I was astounded by the energy of the youth network, by the different ways they were doing things, the different ways they were approaching problems. And I think we all have a lot to learn from listening intergenerationally and listening from each other. So I will welcome to the stage uh, Emma Pritchard, Sankalp Power, and Theo Valois Souza. Thank you. Good afternoon, Congress participants. We want to thank you for your participation in this conference and appreciate the opportunity to address you here. The IPBYN, created in 2016 at the first IPB World Congress, is a collaborative platform for young people that have the common vision of building a climate of peace in this world. We are a global, inclusive and open network striving for a peaceful and just future for everyone. We believe that youth, children, and future generations are not only currently the objects of violence and injustice, but they are also part of the solution to such problems. As a network, we build on the purpose and mission of the IPB, growing a voice for the agency of youth in ever in facing ever-increasing global challenges. As highlighted in the programme of this Congress and visible to many beyond the bounds of this room, we are in a time of crisis, a pivotal moment in our history. Yet confrontational approaches continue to dominate over cooperative ones in fighting many of the challenges that have only worsened since our last Congress. The arms trade, common security, the climate crisis, threats to democratic institutions, and the health crisis catalyzed by the COVID-19 pandemic are clear examples of the challenges facing us all. Violence, both structural and physical, defines our experience of the world and our ability to change it. Peace building is a perpetual human endeavor. We cannot sit back, cannot afford complacency. Peace has to be worked upon, not in the future, but today, now. Peace is an intergenerational project, not because of the old cliche of the youth being our future, but because while age can give us experience in how things are, that rarely gets us closer to how things should be. Working that out isn't the work of a single group. And around the world, young people are already doing the work of peace. They are the frontline climate defenders. They are the peace activists stopping traffic in major cities. They are the protesters on the streets calling for democracy, for accountability, 
for equality. They are the students sitting in their classrooms and asking why their curriculum paints an entire group of people with one brush. The questions we have covered in this Congress affect everyone. The answers will take everyone. And we're here and we're ready to work with you to find them. At the last Congress, it was a running joke in the youth section to keep a tally of the number of times people would say, we have to engage the youth without acknowledging that we were in the room. Ready, engaged, ignored. Out of that frustration, combined with the wonderful and amazing people we met and friendships we formed, we founded the IPBYN to campaign for the meaningful inclusion of youth in peace building and in the IPB and in disarmament. It's great, standing here in 2021, to look back on the last six, five years and see how far we have come, how the IPB has responded to the challenge we posed to them, the goal of 40% of youth, somewhat loosely defined speakers, the active support of our network and funding and, and support of young people to come to this Congress have been a great development. We have had the chance to have a literal seat at the table and this is a great start and we're excited to look to the future as a network and as part of the IPB. The 2021 World Peace Congress set itself a bold aim, one to create a plan for a worthwhile and humane future by creating an inclusive platform, one that we have definitely seen this in these three days. Together, we have engaged with several topics of urgent importance. We have had a courageous conversation about the future we hope to have and one we would like our future generations to inherit. In dire moments of crises and adversity, humanity can either diminish or be enhanced. One may, one may well state that the success of our species lies in interaction, in collaboration and connection. The global reality of our existence has brought with it an un unprecedented range of challenges. Like we have done in these few days, we must continue to build global solidarity along with making a meaningful and positive change locally or wherever we have an impact. Needless to say, the intergenerational project of peace is also transdisciplinary and intersectional, one that must be approached personally within our communities and internationally. As we arrive at the climax of this Congress, on behalf of the IPBYN, we urge, urge you to exchange or engage with the other, to build understanding, to collaborate for action, and to continue your work on creating a shared vision for the future. The IPBYN seeks to be a truly international platform for youth-driven capacity strengthening, advocacy, and action for a more peaceful and humane world. As a network, we truly have a long way to go to make a lasting and positive and a sustainable impact. You, the youth especially, are urged to take responsibility, ask tough questions, and inspire action. We ask you to join us in building this together. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you a lot to Emma and Senkalp. So we continue now with, uh, with uh, the intervention of Bina Lakshmi, Bina Lakshmi, that we call her Bina uh, Nepran from Indian Manipur Women Gun Survivors Network. Bina, Bina, as you know, because she was intervening, is an indigenous scholar and human rights defender. Her work is immense and includes setting up organizations, writing books and academia, or in the pursuit of championing, championing women-led peace. So thank you, Bina. You have a minute. You can talk from there with the, with the mic. I, I would Thank you. Um, uh, it is the solidarity action with repressed people fighting for peace and freedom and the indigenous people's declaration that we have drafted at the end of the World Peace Forum the Congress here. Uh, held in Barcelona. So I allow me, I humbly rep, uh, like be just a voice for ma many, many of us, and it's for all humanity. Roots have spread out from the tree of great peace, one to the north, one to the east, and one to the south, and one to the west. These are the great white roots, and their nature is peace and strength. This is from Wampum number two, the great law of peace, the indigenous constitution of the Iroquois Confederacy. And here is our declaration for the people of the world. Indigenous people congratulates the people gathered at Barcelona, who virtually and also joined in from around the world and call upon all at the Peace Congress to recognize and acknowledge a clarion call for ending all forms of warfare, manufacturing and proliferation of arms, and call for demilitarization and disarming of indigenous people's lands, territories, and resources. Violence against Mother Earth must stop right now. We urge for the immediate removal of current entrenched colonial policies and martial laws which violate indigenous people's rights and take away our rights to life and existence as indigenous peoples and nations. We call for vigilance against militarizing our democracies and our communities. Militarization and securitization has been a mechanism of control and genocide of indigenous people and we all call for the removal of military bases from our lands, territories, our resources, and that ancestral lands that were taken away from us must be returned to us. We call upon the removal of all military bases constructed on our self, non-self-governing territories as recognized by United Nations Committee on Decolonization as it is in the case of United States and Guam. Colonial martial law must be removed from all our territories, as we did in this Congress, as a clarion call to join us, the women, indigenous women of Manipur and Northeast of India, for the repeal of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, imposed on 45 million indigenous people of our region since 1958. Indigenous people also call for the immediate stopping of environmental violence. Committed on our bodies, affecting our health, our land, nations must stop the exploitation of our resource and the toxic contamination with, of our land, air, sea, and space. This includes radiation, diatoxins, nuclear waste, pesticides, insecticides, and other chemicals, and the influx of narcotic drugs and guns and so this is one of the, our calls. Indigenous people manifest high rates of cancer and other diseases as a result of excessive exposure to military waste and contamination. We also make an urgent appeal against eminent rights violations suffered in different parts of Amazonia, particularly in Brazil. We highlight the efforts of indigenous leaders to preserve nature and ancestral territories in the Amazon rainforest. 
not the Amazon that you buy from, and their continued resilience in opposition to illegal land grabbers, oil company invasions, loggers, and miners. We call upon governments of the nine countries sharing the Amazon rainforest to protect indigenous warriors in their fight to defend the rainforest from deforestation and land grabs, because they are the lungs of all of us here. The historical fight representing the strength of more than 350 indigenous groups in inhabiting must, dear please, must not be ignored. And finally, we call upon the Second World Peace Congress to recognize the historic legacy of innovative indigenous people's mechanisms and practices of ending wars, because we also know how to do it, especially the role of indigenous women in peace building, conflict resolution, and disarmament. Just like the youths before, we have been ignored for so long. Indigenous people's traditional practices, such as a great law of peace of the Iroquois Confederation, as that of China role, or Loyumba Xinyin of Manipur since time immemorial, has served as a blueprint for international relations and diplomacy practiced at the highest level. Therefore, we insist that peace and disarmament efforts include decision-making by indigenous peoples, indigenous women, nations, and our youth, if a gender-just and sustainable world is to be realized. Um, I think you have the document in your hands, so I'm not going to end, but I'm going to end with the most important call. We call for the restoration of democracy for the people of Myanmar and stop the killing of indigenous people there and release of all political prisoners, including our dear friend Tin Tin Ong, who was a part of IPB meetings and hundreds of activists and restore democracy, human rights, and rule of law in the Indo-Burma border. And finally, and you're going to love this, <laughs> the, the world's indigenous people belonging to the Global Alliance extends an invitation to each one of you present here that a future of our Peace Congress be held in indigenous people's sovereign land and territories. Imagine what it might look like. <laughs> and, yeah. So thank you, and long live people's power. Long live. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bina. And now we move on to a video from our president, um, Philip Jennings. Um, he um, will, there will be interpretation for this video, contrary to what was said earlier, into Catalan and English. So we'll start the video. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Can I, can I have a sign that, I think you can see me, I just want a sign that you can actually hear me. Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm not, I need to hear the hall. I want to know if you can hear me and if you are with me. Yeah. Better. <laughs> Dear friends, to Sarah and to Geordie, oh God, how I've missed uh, being uh, with uh, all of you uh, these days. I'm speaking in isolation in my room, in my home a long way from you. But even so, it's an honor for me to present uh, this uh, Barca De Barcelona Declaration to you all from afar. I cannot be with you in person, but I can assure you that I felt your spirit, your energy, and your desire to show that another world is possible. I'd like to thank all of you for creating this can-do spirit of the Barcelona Peace Congress. The can-do spirit of the Barcelona Peace Congress. This spirit will drive us on. Will this spirit drive you on? I want to hear your spirit from all these miles away. 
is your spirit to drive this process forward. Are you there? Are you with me? A new agenda for peace has emerged from this Congress. You have been under no illusions. You have pulled the global emergency cord. Many of you have echoed the observation from the recent UN report on a common agenda, where they concluded that it's either breakdown or breakthrough for our planet that a tipping point has been reached. You have risen to the challenge to reimagine the world and the program has been rich in content, in ideas and plans and calls to action. And I hope we can capture all of these ideas and plans in our future work. A peace movement reinvigorated and how bloody good that sounds, sisters and brothers. Friends, when your feelings are low and that you feel that our struggle is impossible, I ask you to go to the well of inspiration that has been the Barcelona experience. We hope you can feed off the comradeship and solidarity that you have experienced this week. The Declaration aims to capture that spirit and energy of our coming together. It is meant to be the poetry that accompanies the prose of the call to action being made at this Congress. These documents should really be read together. It sends a message that we are stronger together, that a new force is being built that unites our movements and that the struggle for peace is central to all our endeavours to reimagine our world. What a moment this has been. What a broad spectrum of organisations and people. I think that we can declare that we are stronger together, inclusive, collaborative, connected. A movement for peace with so many moving and active parts, with those fighting for human rights and democracy, with those fighting for universal social protection and health care, for labour rights, for those fighting against patriarchy, for those fighting for gender equality, for a new social contract, with the climate activists, against racial injustice, against corruption, against the rotten arms trade and militarization, and with all of us for a process of disarmament. Stronger together, Bina, with the wisdom of the indigenous peoples who must play a more central role in our work and that Congress will take place. Stronger together with the youth of the IPB. You have the chance. You have your seat at the table. You are welcome. I think you've broken through. Stronger together to fight violence in all its forms from small arms and urban violence. Stronger together to eradicate violence against all women and girls. Stronger than together to insist that women and girls are central to our peace agenda. Stronger together for a new era of peace treaty for space and to face the aggression of the cyber warfare age. We are stronger together and the times demand of us to work together to have impact and to reimagine our world. This declaration underlines how we have all understood the meaning of Martin Luther King's words when he said, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked and dejected with a lost opportunity. That over the bleached bones and jumbled residues of numerous civilizations are written the pathetic words, too late. Our Barcelona Congress is saying that time is running out for the planet and its people. That we, all of us in this room, recognize the urgency of now. That we, the peace movement, are in tune with humanity who tell us time and time again that the world is on the wrong path. The global pandemic has exposed all the fault lines of one-sided globalization. The folly of spending two trillion dollars on arms for the military machine where never is enough. We demand a human-centered recovery from this pandemic. We can afford universal social protection and healthcare. We must make vaccines available to the world. That humanity rejects war and humanity demands disarmament. That humanity rejects nuclear weapons. We say again, no more Hiroshima's and no more Nagasaki's. That we cherish and respect the warnings from the Hibakusha that humanity wants a social contract, 
that this four billion euro planet of ours needs to breathe again. We send a message of solidarity and support to all those that aim to shake the world from its complacency at the COP26 in Glasgow. Let it be a city of global brave hearts who will stand up for a new deal for this planet to show that rapacious capitalism is violating our planet's ability to survive and its slavery to profit and rates of return beyond any other consideration must end. It is a time for a global treaty that makes it a legal obligation for business to respect human rights. We are not alone. We welcome those sustainable development goals and fight for them. We welcome this new common agenda. This declaration calls for a new approach away from the abyss that geopolitical superpower rivalry brings. We see the neoliberal idea of strategic competition has entered the language of state relations. This is destructive thinking. This is not about non-violent coexistence. This is about win at all costs from military doctrines, economic trade and technological policies. It is nothing to do with our common and human security. Our declaration is clear that we reject these new rules of the game. Our only path is through peaceful cooperation, not mutually assured destruction. The, new, the UN has demanded a new agenda for peace and we are ready to play our part. We have exciting new ideas for initiatives in the Mediterranean, in Asia and Pacific, in Africa and America and in Europe. And it's important that we take this declaration of ours to the UN, to the Global Commission on Common Security and to our allies worldwide. In closing, this declaration will enthuse us for the years ahead. We are fired up and ready to go. The action plan lays out the path. This declaration inspires our spirit, stronger together to reimagine our world. The answers lie in our hands. We are not helpless. Let us not be found wanting. Thank you, and I commend this declaration to each of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much to Philip. Uh, so the next speaker uh, is to present the IPB action plan. It will be Rainer Brown, the executive director of the IPB. He's, you know him, he's very familiar to all of us these days. Uh, before executive director, he has been president in IPB during six, year, six years, and he has been involved in many peace uh, movements and, and actions during the last decades. Uh, and, and I think I don't need to say more uh, about Rainer. Thank you. The floor is yours. Yeah, dear colleagues and dear friends, what to say at quite the end of such a Congress? First of all, I have the great pleasure to announce that we had in Barcelona more than 900 people taking part at the Congress at the different days, and on, online, more than 1,700 were joining us. What a Congress. It is your Congress. You made it possible. Thank you so much for that. And I think and I hope that the spirit of the Congress, the spirit of our future actions, you also find personally in the action plan. The action plan for IPB is a very ambitious plan. We really try our best to develop the peace movement in the different parts of the actions. First of all, I want to announce that we invite all of you to the next IPB World Congress in five years in Asia, in an indigenous region in Asia. That is our goal and that is our big aim for what we are fighting for the next years. But we will immediately continue working and we have big actions before us, actions which unite us. We will meet, many of us will meet again at the World Social Forums in Mexico in May next year. 
And what is the great positive development of this World Social Forum? It has peace as a big part of this World Social Forum. And I can tell you, IPB was fighting for this for many, many years, and finally we were successful. So the World Social Forum will be a peace congress, and that is great, and I hope many of you, online and offline, we will see at this conference. At the same, I hope to see many of you, above all, many of my Barcelona, Catalan and Spanish friends in the protest action against the NATO summit in June next, next year in Madrid. I think we have to overcome this stupid military alliance which steal us life and cost us billions. But the action plan is also an offer to you. It's first of all an offer for coalition buildings in the city, in the community, in the different countries, but also international. We as IPB want to enlarge our context to the International Trade Unions Confederation, to the world churches, to the environment movement. And I'm happy that we have the speech of the President of Friends of the Earth in the morning. Well, not only by video, but that we have Greenpeace as a supporting organization for this conference. We want to continue to go this way to bring together the environmental movement and the peace movement because they are two sides on one coin. This is the future of a worldwide coalition for peace and for saving the planet. And this is our task to do it. But at the end, this action plan is also an offer to you. It's an offer because this has ideas which only become a reality with the support of all of you in the room, online, and maybe have a nice Sunday today. This is an offer to you, and we are very open for further ideas. So take this action plan as an offer, as an invitation for further common actions. IPB is 130 years old this year, but I think we were never younger than we are now, and I hope that we continue with all this power of this conference in the future. The world needs this. The world needs a stronger peace movement. We are able to develop it. Thank you. Reiner. Um, and our next speaker uh, is Yara El Harake from Lebanon. Uh, Yara is a youth activist for social justice across the Mediterranean region in particular. Um, glad to hear you speak. Hello. Uh, can I move on the stage a little bit because it's easier for me? Hello, everyone. Masal <laughs> khair in my own language. Uh, well, I didn't prepare a speech. I was thinking the last week I have been like in a hectic week of writing a dissertation and trying to be part of the wonderful group that they did an amazing job in IPB. But actually, the last moment I decided not to write anything. And I said, like, if human experience cannot take the stage, a speech will never do anything later. And for me, it's a, I'm gonna talk a little bit about a few things. I'm from Lebanon and uh, well, Lebanon is on the Mediterranean, if some, someone doesn't know. And I'm close to, actually I'm in the middle of a conflict zone. I haven't remember actually a year that we didn't have a war uh, we didn't have uh, bombings, attacks, uh, people kidnapped, imprisoned. So, and I'm, say, I'm saying it like with all this passion, not because this is something nice, but actually this allowed me here to be on the stage with wonderful people, with wonderful people also w like listening to us and to talk about my experience while many people, they cannot get this chance and this privilege to talk about their experience. And to start, I'm gonna do one thing. 
Okay. Peace. What's peace? <laughs> we always have this discourse about peace as uh, boring, big words, a lot of articles that we need to uh, like read and write, and we cannot even understand most of the words that are written. Like, really. <laughs> At least this is my case. And basically, I feel like peace should be something fun. <laughs> like, war is fun, actually. And war is fun because, like, well, most of people, like, they prefer to go and buy a gun, and even for kids, because it's funnier and it's, like, really interesting and entertaining. Rather, like, any peaceful thing, no, it's boring. Yeah, why should we bother? So, actually, this is the first thing we should think about, the discourse of peace. If we need peace, we need it to make it interesting to people. War is not fun. Okay? It's not fun. Of course it's not fun. This is how they sell it. This is how they sell it. They sell it for us as part of the system that this is something that we need to do. This is something that is normalized and normal in our life. Rather, peace is something like extraordinary. We're bringing it from a different planet. Like we should live in peace. We should be peaceful. But we not, like no one taught us how to be peaceful. Rather, it's something natural. This is at least my opinion, and I guess a lot of opinion of people here. I'm going to go from this point of peace and entertaining and being something interesting to the passion. And I guess a passion for life, passion for food, passion for music, and passion for peace. And I guess most of the activists in the ground, in the field, they have passion for what they do. And I guess most of you here, they have this passion. So... This is the first point and the most important point. To be able to, a call to action, to make an action, is to recognize also all the actions that have been done before by local communities, by indigenous people, and not that we're coming now to make a project about peace and like, let's do peace. It's not like that. Definitely not like that. And talking about food, because I guess food is something really peaceful, and everyone yesterday, Bina, we were talking about this topic. And I guess food is something really interesting, because uh, it can show you a lot of aspects in life, in our life. We, how many people of you like, like kebab? Yeah, yeah, show me your hands, please. My culture. <laughs> okay, so... How many of you like kebab? Rather, the people that they do the kebab, they are killed in the sea. We accept their food because it's so delicious, but we don't want the people who make the kebab. This is the fact. This is the reality. And in order to change that, we cannot just love the food. We have also to love the people who make the food. Okay, they are telling me it's one more word, one? Okay, <laughs> it's hard, I told you. Uh, anyway, I cannot add many, many more things or uh, more things that the wonderful people they said. I just want to tell you like from my position here that we need to act not, be not because of others, because for ourselves before other. Having empathy with other people is not the first issue. The first issue is to know our positioning in this world. We go and elect the people, the politicians. We don't blame politicians and we go to the election and put their names. This is our work, our job. And our work and our job impact other people's life. Just the last word, thank you so much. Thank you for IPB to inviting me to be part of the speakers. And I thank you all of you for this amazing audience and engaging audience and participative. And the last word that I can say, peace can be only brought when really we believe that it can happen. And thank you so much. Okay, we are getting to the end. Now it's time. Ara, ara és el moment de, de passar la paraula, però no tenim molt de temps, com, com sol passar. 
uh, now it's time to, to, to pass the word for you, to you, but we don't have a lot of time. So maybe we could have a couple of interventions. If, you, if some of you, you want to have, you want to you you come here, say something in one minute, uh, in a couple of minutes maximum, uh, please, if you want to come uh, to contribute to all the words that we have said, you can come here. And also online, you have the option uh, also to ask for the floor, and we can put you there in the screen, and you can also share with us uh, your intervention. We only have 10 minutes for that, no more. So uh, now we open the floor. Uh, obrim la paraula per totes vosaltres, si voleu escuchar i venir, i venir a, a intervenir. Donem temps perquè hi hagi... Anem a fer una combinació de que hi hagi diversitat en les paraules. I eh, anem a fer com a mínim eh, que, que sigui eh, combinat eh, a nivell de gènere i de generació. Uh, um, the moment no, no, uh, we could uh, we, we are combining all the words uh, uh, mixing uh, the say generations and gender so uh, in this case I think we are reaching maybe the maximum we can have another word to have the combination do we have words online this one online okay excellent so if you want we can we can we can start with the with the line, and we prepare with with here the people in person, and we prepare the online presentation after them. Let's see if we have time for more for more words. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Alvarado. I uh, live in the United States in Cleveland. I'm a full-time volunteer with the Interreligious Task Force on Central America and Colombia, or IRTF Cleveland. Uh, for myself personally, I am a Chicano, Tejano. I, I am a uh, indigenous uh, Norteño from uh, originally from San Antonio, Texas. I am Mexican on my father's side of the family. I am Vietnamese on my mother's side of the family. On both sides of my family, I am a product of conflict and war. Uh, I just want to say, I've heard the word citizen used quite often this weekend. And as someone who, uh, who advocates, and I don't want to say speak for, uh, as someone who works to amplify uh, the voices of um, migrants who are denied documentation, of uh, people who have uh, become refugees uh, because of, of uh, the climate crisis, uh, or of uh, persons who are stateless, I see the word citizen as a word that is used as a boot on the neck of people who are oppressed and repressed and marginalized all around the world. And, uh, then this is not, I'm not trying to shame anyone for using the word, well, okay, I am trying to shame people for using the word citizen. Uh, I want to say that uh, citizens, citizens of industrialized countries, of highly technologized countries, uh, citizens of so-called civilized societies, do not know how to live in right relationship with the earth. It will not be citizens who will lead us out of the climate crisis. It will not be citizens of the colonizer nations like those of Europe and like the United States, the greatest empire that the world has ever known. It will not be the citizens of these nations who will lead us to peace. It will be the indigenous people the marginalized peoples of the world who will teach us how to cool the earth, who will lead us out of war, who will lead us out of conflict. 
And if we will only listen and respect the leadership and get over our internalized colonization and get over our white supremacy, otherwise uh, we will fail. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in the plenary of this amazing, indeed, uh, Congress. My name is Alexia Tsouni. I come from uh, Greece. I'm the president of the European Bureau for Conscientious Objection. Uh, I'm the first woman president also, which uh, we are happy because uh, we consider uh, anti-militarism and uh, human rights also a feminist uh, contribution to peace. And uh, what we just want to say in one sentence is please don't forget the human right to conscientious objection to military service in your efforts, in your campaigns, in everything, because it's a tangible contribution to peace. People are refusing to join the army. There are still conscription in many countries around the world, even in Europe, where I come from. And indeed, there are people, boys, but also girls in some countries, who are imprisoned for this, who are going through military courts who are being discriminated, who are being forced to pay huge fines. Because what? Because they refuse practically to learn how to kill, to be educated, to be prepared for war. So please, just don't forget that a minority, okay, this is good that it, now it's a minority, this means we have a big progress all this year. But please, please don't forget the conscience objections to military service. Thank you so much. Hello. First, thank you for the Congress. My name is Henning Zirok. I'm from the Society Culture of Peace. 98 of 8 May, I organized the first International Congress of Culture of Peace together with Miki Stetorakis, who died this year, 96. And it was a great man to bring the music in the culture of peace. Though, I have three points. The first is, we invite you also 8 and 9 May to our town where we founded the first Congress, the Tübingen the second Culture of Peace Congress, and we continue there. We never sh should forget that we are staying here. It's the death of the people who survived and who were killed in the concentration camp. They lose their life in the 8th May, and we have the hope to complete that we can go on. We never forget. This is the first invitation. The second is the churches will have a meet on the 28th of um, May also in in the town in Stuttgart, it's nearby. And there are two military bases, it's AFRICOM and OICOM. We heard a lot of militarization of weapons. Though we pro also promote their uh, manifestation, a tribunal, and a Woodstock for the artists to bring music. We have to change the military base everywhere and to make peace base everywhere. And we should find an action plan all uh, over the world. And the last thing is, Peace is a human right. Though we create, it was with Federica Mayor, the human right to peace. And our proposal is the 10th of December, the human right date of peace. And we should take these days every year to demand the human right to peace. And we accuse all the people who send weapons, who, uh, who uh, proclaim the peace of the war, and we have to defend it. Though these are three proposals that we continue, make an action, make overcome all these killings, export of weapons, and all the military bases, make center of a culture of peace. Thank you. Mayong hapon sa tanan, good afternoon. I am Zarina Musni from the Philippines. I am a national member of the National Union of People's Lawyers in the Philippines. First of all, congratulations to the IPB and everyone here. For everyone here to, to come together and to call for justice and peace around the world. But for, for all of us to achieve peace, first of all, we must acknowledge that there are human rights violations around the world. And with these human rights violations, it is important for us to not only acknowledge these human rights violations, but to hold accountable all those who have violated these human rights violations, not just in the Philippines, but around the world. Because if there is no accountability, there can be no justice, and when there is no justice, there can be no peace. 
So we call upon everybody to include in these movements, indigenous peoples, workers, farmers, uh, the youth from all cultures, from all colors, from all parts of the world to, to come together to not just to, to talk, but to operationalize, to put into action all these laws, all these treaties, so, so that they will have a trickle-down effect into these communities where these human rights violations are being violated. So once again, thank you very much and congratulations for all of us. Padayon, dugang kadasik, ong long live the peace movement, long live international solidarity. Thank you very much. Good day. First of all, I'd like to thank the IPB for their invitation, and I wish them a lot of success. My name is Ali Dahan. I am from Djiboutian origin. I'm a Canadian citizen who live in Quebec City. <clears throat> I am the president for the Partisans for Peace Through Justice for All, and president for the Union of Africans and Friends with Africa Today, I'm here to talk about minorities and indigenous people. Indigenous people in Quebec, in particular, they are like uh, less than human being considered. Yeah, I don't know if any one of you know what is the situation there, but not so long ago, there is a lady who was in hospital. Her name is Joyce Echokwan. She is an indigenous people was killed in a horrible way on the hospital. Few months after, there was a Cameroonian man, a woman, a woman from Cameroon. She also was dead at the hospital. Many people from African descent, they were shot and they was blamed that they are the bad ones. The justice, the appareil judiciaire, and the police always attacking the, uh, those minority without uh, no justice. Me, myself, as a defender of human rights, because I defend them, because I did uh, conferences like last uh, May for the first anniversary of uh, the death of uh, jo uh, George Floyd, they don't want me to believe. They, uh, I asked them to do a park for Nelson Mandela, an African park, and they created me a lot of people, and my life, is, it is in danger. I was candidate in the election, and they shot, the first time in history in Quebec City, they shot the, pamphlet, the poster of a candidate. Therefore, I'm telling you, my life is in danger because I'm defending human rights. I was always for peace, and I always was pacific, but will never be passive face of injustice. That's why since the age of 16, I was in an international committee for the liberation of Nelson Mandela and his friend, and I guess apartheid. I thank you for listening to me, and I beg you do something for the indigenous and the minorities. Thank you. Okay, next, please. Do it one minute. We have, we have finished the, the interventions. I'm sorry. We have two, one minute, because we need to finish to close the, 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 the session at two. And we have just uh, two more things to do. Thank you. And we are very Continua. sorry to have more time. Go ahead. Continue with the message of this man who has talked about. I bring the voice of the Zapatistas. Tot un exèrcit que han canviat les bales per les paraules i han enviat a Europa 200 i pico persones amb 28 comandos d'escutxa palabra. Ens hem organitzat els, els, els moviments socials de bajo a la izquierda per rebre'ls. No hi ha cap ressò en cap mitjà oficial d'aquest tipus de notícies. Per què no interessa? Per què no volen? Per què tot plegat? Fins i tot des de Mèxic els han dit que són extemporanis considerant que ara no hauríem d'existir. Doncs estan aquí. I el mes de novembre arriben a Catalunya, arriben a la península. Ara estan pel mig, pel mig d'Europa. I han aconseguit, només amb la seva vinguda, que els moviments socials d'Europa bajo la izquierda estiguem tots enxarxats 
per posar-nos d'acord, per organitzar agendes, per conèixer-nos, per reconèixer-nos. Això ha sigut la primera llavor. Després, quan vinguin al país, en sembraran d'altres. Sobretot no us ho perdeu. Els tenim a casa. Gràcies. Gràcies. Good day, everyone. My name is Sibyl Olnyedikane from Nigeria. I'm a peace volunteer with IOPA, International Association of World Peace Ambassadors in Nigeria. My contribution, I thank everybody for the opportunity to be here today for the plenary. And uh, my contribution is just one word or a sentence. I say, peace should be a lifestyle. Because if peace is not a lifestyle, it will not be achievable. You will live peace as a lifestyle from the family, from the time we're born, from the time we teach our children, from the people we interact with, and it becomes a lifestyle. Peace will be achievable in the whole world. Thank you. Thank you everyone for all those contributions. I would also like to add for everyone watching online that all the comments and questions are being monitored by the IPB and everything will be taken into account and discussed at later meetings. So all the input is being taken into sort of account for our future conversations about what the IPP does and what we are. So we are coming to the end now, just a few more words from a couple of people. Um, and I think the main thing that I will personally take away from this weekend is what one of those contributors just said, that this is all about international solidarity and reinforcing those links. We cannot solve our problems alone. We cannot be egotistical enough to think that we even can try to. So coming together as a movement, both online and in person, that has been very valuable for all our work, individually and as a collective. So to finish us off now, I'm going to pass you back to our co-president, Philip Jennings, who is again joining us uh, remotely. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sarah. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to make these closing remarks to the Congress and all the participants. We have reached the hour when we must bid farewell to this Congress and to Barcelona. It's a moment to reflect on what has been and what the future holds. We hope that new friendships have been made. We hope that our peace veterans feel the energy that has been witnessed here, proud and joyful that a new generation of leaders are emerging and that they are ready to accept responsibility and now. We see that new commitments have been made to drive our peace agenda forward. We hope there is a new spark, a new zeal, a new desire to work for peace. Each of you have been part of something very powerful. And as you depart, you know that you are not alone, that we are not afraid, that we walk hand in hand and that you will not be denied. A fire has been lit in our souls that will shine through the darkness that surrounds us. We have risen to the challenge to reimagine our world and agree that for humanity to thrive, then peace, human-centered peace, has to be at the heart of our work. This Congress has been a letter of love to our planet, to people with a promise that change must come to push back the doomsday clock. For making this possible, let us send a letter of love and affection to the people of Barcelona, of Catalonia and of Spain. Thank you for your welcome. Please get on your feet and make some noise for the people of Barcelona, to the people of Catalonia and the people of Spain. I want to hear you. Thank you. Our thanks to the IPB team in Berlin. Uh, Rainer, we convey our deep gratitude to your industrious, it's never too much trouble team. Our thanks to the Barcelona team. Jordi, we convey our deep gratitude to your dynamic and innovative team. Berlin and Barcelona, two teams working together, showing that it always seems impossible until it's done. And it has been done well. 
It's been more than done. You have bridged the digital and human world. And what an accomplishment it's been. Just brilliant. Thank you for all the behind the scenes techies that have brought 3,000 people from, uh, from around the world together. Please on your feet and make some noise for the teams from Berlin, Barcelona, and the technological maestros that have made all this possible. Thank you. How grateful uh, we are that each of you in that room could meet as people to embrace one another, to share your human stories. Zoom has helped oil our communication and kept our momentum alive at a time of closure. And yet we rejoice in being face to face, shoulder to shoulder, human to human. This has made this the richest of human experiences and as many of you have said, how we have missed it. Our message to the world is clear. We have the policies and ideas to reimagine our world, that we are stronger together to take action together for peace and justice. Our message to the world is we will have an impact and fight to deliver that change that we seek. To those who say it cannot be done, we will tell them that we have now made nuclear weapons illegal as we have biological, chemical, landmines and cluster bombs. It can be done. We will take a powerful message to the TPNW States Parties talks in Vienna, to the NPT Treaty Conference, and will be ready for Glasgow at COP26. We are closing in on the nine nuclear states and all those that shelter under the nuclear weapon umbrella, that one day we will free this planet of nuclear weapons. We've been inspired by the mobilizing force of Black Lives Matter and the action on the ground taken by all of you for economic, human rights, democratic rights and climate justice. We have been a Congress of ideas and they will find a home in the work of the Global Commission on Common Security, which will report in 2022. To those in power, we say move over. It's time for women leaders to drive our peace building and peace processes. We have seen the power of youth and their desire to take on leadership roles in our peace movement, and we will make that happen. We will include the indigenous peoples in our deliberations. The world needs their ancient wisdom and love for our sacred earth. Let us make this happen. This Congress sends a message to the IPB as it celebrates its 130th anniversary this year, that we are needed, we are relevant, that we too must change to become more global, more regional, and to always have an impact. Our drive is to have an impact. The Congress has laid down an ambitious path and now the team will have to develop plans to implement all the ideas and the declarations and action plans that lie before us. We must not falter. We look forward to building our work in Asia and Pacific, in Africa and Latin America, and of course in Europe. We want this global network as leverage for change. In closing, I wish you all well. When our colleague from the Lebanon put that sponge nose on her face, it reminded me that Charlie Chaplin found his final resting place not far from here. And I recall his words when he said that you will never find rainbows if you are looking down. This Congress has been about looking up and beyond to new peace horizons. As Dr. King said, only in darkness can you see the stars. Well, we now have many stars to guide our action. Let me thank Rainer Brown and his team for his work and companionship. Let me thank Lisa Clark. I am her co-president. Essentially, she is my boss. And I thank her for this trunk, this tranquil, determined force that is Lisa. We have been inspired by the words of John Lennon and Yoko Ono. We have challenged you to reimagine our world and you have done so. We could not have asked more of each of you and each of you have delivered. At home, I have a quote from Nelson Mandela, which I read every day and it reads, there is no passion to be found playing small in settling for life that is less than the one you are capable of living. Friends, you have not been lacking in passion 
and you have not been playing small. You have not chosen the easy street and you are living a life dedicated to peace for all humanity and for that we thank you. In five years, our vision is for a World Peace Congress in the Asian and Pacific region, and we will make that happen. See you then. Long live solidarity. Long live our peace movement. And now one more time, all of you on your feet, make some noise for the IPB, for our Asian and Pacific Conference, and the energy that we bring to this world at peace, a new agenda for peace, action for peace across the generations, across the geographic divides. We have a beating heart for peace, for humanity, for the world. On your feet, make some noise, let your hair down. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. We have a present from Henning here, Picasso. Just the last word to say goodbye. We need to say really thank you to all of you. We were 2,500 people in total uh, participating in, in during these days. And I would really use half a minute to say thank you to Kike to Ares, to Ainoa, to Maria, to Edu, to Lucas, to Jessica, to Julia, to Son, to Stephanie, to Chema, to Sabina, to 30 volunteers, to Mark, to, to the co local committee, to all the people, translators, Coinos, Lucky, CCCB, Luis Estebao, Kesoni, and the lot of volunteers that the list is so long that we are more than 50 people working to make it, it happen and in the purpose. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I say it, I say it. Thank you very much.